Out goes one perimeter-oriented power forward. In comes one perimeter-oriented power forward. Kerry Booth has committed to Illinois. I visited over the weekend. This was rumored to be happening around the same time the Kai Boswell commitment was happening, and it turns out the rumors were correct. And if you believe the rumors, they might not be done, Cart. There might be more coming for Illinois Nation. Kerry Booth showed some things at Notre Dame. He also showed some bad things, I think, at Notre Dame. But all in all, it was like a, an eye-popping freshman season. 6.4 points per game, 4.3 rebounds, half of a block. He played 20 minutes a game, only 39% from the floor, and 29% from three on 3.6 attempts per game. For the record, if you're like, wow, he shoots a lot. Is he a shooter? He shot 63% from the free throw line. So there's not much that he's shown other than willingness to shoot that – speaks to him being a high quality shooter. This was a top hundred kid uh, ranked inside the top 75 by basically all the big services. I thought he was a really good fit for a Micah Shrewsbury offense. Long-term he opted out of the Micah Shrewsbury offense. He's six foot 10, 203 pounds. Uh, whatever you feel about Kerry Booth at bare minimum, he's a big piece for the future. Like you would project this guy to get a lot better over the next three years, whether it was at Illinois or elsewhere. And now it's at Illinois. What do you make of Kerry Booth? Uh, I'm very intrigued about this ad because I think that Kerry Booth's ceiling is extremely high. Um, and I do think that it can be unlocked, um, with the correct coaching and the correct system. And I, I don't want to make it about this, but I do have to say this. I'm, I'm just shocked that the Shrewsbury thing wasn't right for him because I see Shrews as a guy who plays a style that is conducive to him and develops players. And, you know, even had the even in his even in his first season at 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 Notre Dame, he was able to get Marcus Burton to be ACC Rookie of the Year. Uh, his son Braden Shrewsbury was one of the league's best shooters in conference play. Uh, sophomore Tay Davis was a pretty good and made improvements throughout the year. Even Kerry Booth himself, I think, made improvements throughout the year. So I was just shocked to see that. Also shocked that he kind of he made the statement straight up. He had an interview. Uh, with I think Jamie Shaw from on on three who was with, um, and he said that Micah Shrewsbury's coaching and playing style, like he just he was just dissatisfied with it straight up. That was the, that was the quote. So ah, uh, 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 let, let me just can I can I mentally verbally add this out loud and you tell me if I have this correct? Carrie Booth, a six foot ten, perimeter oriented big who likes to shoot. That's the number one thing he wants to do on the basketball court is float to the perimeter and shoot. And he doesn't make a lot of shots, but he likes to shoot. The reason he is leaving Notre Dame is that he was frustrated with his role and the offense of Micah Shrewsbury, which is a premier perimeter oriented punt shots from outside stretch, big man offense and it was a team where he was allowed to play 20 minutes a game, shoot almost four threes a game, and start 19 games as a true freshman. Yeah, I didn't do it for him. Huh. Gregory. Huh. Gregory. What? Ty Rogers went on a tour last season. So we got good guys. It's hard to make a guy happy that maybe not be able to be made happy. Now, I'm not saying that's not going to happen. All I'm saying is I'm putting a little tiny little red flag in the pin here just to keep an eye on this, that a guy who was given this type of stuff, you know, given this leeway, this ability in an offense with a good coach is still dissatisfied. I Okay. Yeah. Maybe he wants to play in, in, you know, in the Coleman Hawkins role. Maybe that's what intrigues him. I don't know, but I don't, I just, just something I'm going to be monitoring. I would say. Harry Booth shot the third most three-pointers on Notre Dame last season. The only players that shot more were their starting backcourt who played way more minutes than he did. Like, <laughs> I just, I'm pro leave. I'm pro get in the portal. I'm not pro go in the portal and like blame your coaches and throw your offense under the bus when it was the perfect offense for you. Like it's, this kid got arguably more opportunity than he should have. He was inefficient from the floor. He couldn't finish around the rim. He was inefficient from three, and he was still chucking shots from three, and nobody told him to stop. 
his role only increased over the course of the season. And I don't think his production necessarily even warranted the role that increased over the season. Like he, he took the starting job over at the end of December, started every game except for three for the remainder of the season, started playing closer to 30 minutes a game instead of 10 minutes a game. And he returned that favor by only scoring in double figures, three of his final 20 games. Like I, I get Notre Dame was bad, but they used Kerry Booth in like a featured role. And he was part of the reason they were bad. And I don't want to shit on him too much because look, they also got a lot better by the end of the season. Like there was reason to believe at the end of the year, this young core of Kerry Booth and Shrewsbury's son and Marcus Burton were like, a team that could go forward and win a lot of games. And Kerry Booth was a big part of that. Like when Kerry Booth played his best basketball, Notre Dame won five of six games to end the regular season. And Kerry Booth looked very good in those games. So clearly there's a lot of potential here. Clearly there's a next level. He needs to find ways to be efficient from the floor. But yeah, the the red flag here to me is not even like anything he has or has not done on the basketball court. The red flag here to me is I can't believe he wanted to leave that system and thinks that's part of what was holding him back. Yeah, it's 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 just something that we're monitoring now. The he was expected to struggle his freshman year because though he was like a higher recruit, I think he was like 60th overall. He was expect you know he was a lot of he he was a project in some sorts. Like he had the length, the athleticism, um, and you know the frame. But he needed to kind of you know fill some things out. He's a lanky six ten guy. So I thought that he you know did a pretty good job of. Shrews did a good job, of, I think, giving him an opportunity while also like letting him play through mistakes. Uh, maybe he could have played more, yes. But I, I thought that his freshman year, though there were struggles, those were expected, and I think he kind of got through them for the most part. Um, so I, I'm just um, – it's just interesting to see in this case. Um, and now for him at Illinois, you know, I obviously think that there's a role for him. I, I'm not sure what Illinois fans kind of see him at and see him kind of being. Uh, also, th- if this makes it funny for as much as like Coleman Hawkins was great at Illinois, he was also one of the most ridiculed players at Illinois. Uh, I don't know, like, if Booth wants to get into that role where they just ridicule him like they ridiculed Coleman. I think Coleman was very singularly unique, though. Like, I, I don't think it was necessarily Coleman's game that ended up earning the ridicule at times. Like, it was the extra stuff that Coleman just couldn't avoid like he played basketball in such a weird I don't know demonstrative way where he antagonized officials and whined and complained about opponents we loved it we thought it was entertaining it would wear on me as a fan of that team if you weren't like senior Coleman like sophomore Coleman doing all that was like probably pretty annoying to Illinois fans I don't think there's any of that with Kerry Booth like from watching Notre Dame this season I watched a good amount of this team um I don't think there's like bad teammate concerns by any means. And even though we're doing like the red flag of why does he want to leave? He hasn't like come out on record and said any of this, has he? Or like, no, he has. Oh, he has. Yeah. Like I'm, I I got the, 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 the article he, he was, he went on with Jamie Shaw and was telling him like why he loved Illinois. And he said, Illinois tells me how much they love me as a player. They see me as a Coleman Hawkins type doing a lot of what he does. They play fast. They push the pace. And they want to be able for me to create some off the dribble. Booth made this statement to Shaw and implied that he was dissatisfied with Notre Dame head coach Michael Shrewsbury's coaching and playing style. Ah, yeah, never mind. I'm really scared about that. Uh, I do get, though, I, I understand why Booth wants to be Coleman Hawkins. Like, that's a great pitch. Kudos to Brad and staff for pitching a talented kid on come be the next Coleman Hawkins and credit to Coleman Hawkins for becoming something that players want to go emulate. That's awesome. Good for Illinois with that. Uh, It is absolutely downright hilarious that Carrie Booth is leaving the originator of booty ball to go play for the guy who stole booty ball and publicly said he stole booty ball all season long and is claiming it's an offensive system upgrade for him. Like was wasn't that exactly the same system last year? <laughs> yeah, and he knew us because Booth was originally committed to Shrewsbury at Penn State. Like this, yeah. like he 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 was a Shrews guy. So this is uh, that's just know. weird. It's weird. Uh, okay, all all that stuff aside, do you believe Kerry Booth's going to be a good big time basketball player? I I do I do because I I actually believe this is one thing I do believe in. I talked about how I think Shrews is a good player development guy. I think that 
Brad and his staff are good at player development. And I think that booth is going to get better at Illinois and, or at least has the chance to get better if he stays there long enough. I agree with you. If he stays at Illinois for three more years by year four, he will be a good big 10 starter level player. I don't think he's going to be that this year. Do you think he's ready to like start at the four for Illinois? I don't, I don't think so. So that's what scares me here is like, you look at their depth chart now, the scholarships they have out. And I know they still have three big openings. They're after huge names. They're going to land some big fish. I'm not worried about the transfer class at all, but Dane Danger's out. Coleman Hawkins is out. Amani Hansberry's out. That means their front court rotation right now is literally just Merez Johnson and Kerry Booth. I don't know if they're going to like push Ty Rogers down to the four, play Luke Goody at the four, or if they need to go get a big fish still. But Card, I think if you if you need 60 minutes, let alone 80 minutes, from Merez Johnson and Kerry Booth, that seems like a stretch for me. Like, and I I love Merez, but we don't know what he is yet. And Kerry Booth, to me, you don't want him in a 30 minute role at Illinois right now. You're you're going from a very old team last year to a very young team. Yeah. And <laughs> as much as I love Brad, his MO is not young teams. Yeah. They need a big fish, I think, in the front court. I know they're. it sounds like they're going to get a big fish, whether in the guard or the wing spot. Like between Dante Maddox and A.J. Storr, they're trying and they feel good. I haven't heard a bunch that they're like still actively trying to get a big fish big. I would still, I think. like I, I think they need someone who's a guaranteed good starter to play somewhere ahead of Merez and Kerry Booth right now. Nick Pringle just got in the portal from Bama. I would like that. I would like that ad. There's no shortage of guys, and Illinois still has a lot of scholarships. Again, this is not me saying the class isn't going to work, um, but I think they're one to two big fish short from being the team they were last year. So we'll see. Uh, would you rather have Quincy Garrier or Kerry Booth, by the way? I know that's not like an actual one for one, but just impact wise. Like if you if you could have Quincy Garrier again next season or Kerry Booth for one season next year, who do you think would help Illinois more? Garrier. Me too, which is not great to say out loud. I don't love that. But you have more years of Booth. Very true. Uh, okay, I hope Kerry Booth proves me wrong. I hope he Marcus Damascs me. That's the term when a player just is great that I'm skeptical of. Uh, good luck. Congrats, Illinois Nation. You got another big chip. Good job, Brad Underwood. If you've been watching our videos this season, you know that we are presented by my bookie. Carter, tell the people about my bookie. My bookie is the official sports book of Sleepers Media. They have everything you need from expert predictions, write-ups. I mean, any 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 way you want to bet, my bookie makes it easy for you to play your way and get paid. And right now, Gregory, we have an instant deposit bonus up to a thousand dollars. All you have to do is use promo code Sleepers. That's promo code Sleepers. Take advantage of this great offer today and everything that my bookie has to offer. Yeah, the NCAA tournament may be over. The madness. Maybe it's put to bed for a little bit. But college basketball is still rocking. It's transfer portal season. NBA playoffs are coming soon. There's still a ton to bet on, and you should bet with us at MyBookie. The link is in the description of this video. Use promo code SLEEPERS.